Yasomati Nandana Bajabara Nagara Kokula Hinda Hare Krishna, 
Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Chapter 5, Srimad Bhagavatam, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Prahlad, the saintly son of Rani Kashiput, chapter. Text 55. This is the next. The next verse has two verses, and that ends the chapter. Okay. Atatam lakshnaya vacha. Pratya yuha maha buddha. Vacha vidvam stam nishtam. Kripaya Prahasaniva Kripaya Prahasaniva Atatan Laksnaya Vacha Atatan Laksnaya Vacha Pratyahuya Mahaburaha Pratyahuya Mahaburaha Uvacha Vidvam Standishtam Uvacha Kripaya Prahasaniva Atatan Lakshnaya Vacha Pratyayuha Mahabuddha Vacha Vidvam Stanishtam Kripaya Prahasan Iva
Then, Tan, the class friends, Laksnaya, with very pleasing, Vacha, speech, Pratyahuyuha, Yuya, addressing, Mahabuddha, Prahlad Maharaj, who was highly learned and advanced in spiritual consciousness. Maha means great, and Buddha means learned. Uvacha said, Vidvan, very learned. Tanishtam, the path of God realization. Kripaya, being merciful. Prahasan, smiling. Eva, like. Mm -hmm. So now, Prahlad is back in school, and he's with his classrooms. Prahlad Maharaj, who was, very, who was truly the supreme learned person, then addressed his class friends in very sweet language. Smiling, he began to teach them about the uselessness of materialistic way of life. Being very kind to them, he instructed them as follows. So, Shri Prabhupada's purport. Prahlad Maharaj's smiling is very significant. The other students were very much advanced in enjoying materialistic life through religion, economic development, and sense gratification. But Prahlad Maharaj laughed at them, knowing that this was not actual happiness, for real happiness is advancement in Krishna consciousness. The duty of those who follow in the footsteps of Prahlad Maharaj is to teach the entire world how to become Krishna conscious and thus be really happy. Materialistic persons take to so-called religion to get some blessing so they can pr improve their economic position and enjoy material world through sense gratification. But devotees like Prahlad Maharaj laugh at how foolish they are to be busy in temporary life without knowledge of the soul's transmigration from one body to another. Materialistic persons are engaged in striving for temporary benefit, whereas persons advanced in spiritual knowledge, such as Prahlad Maharaj, are not interested in the materialistic way of life. Instead, they want it to be elevated to an eternal life of knowledge and bliss. Therefore, as Krishna is always compassionate to the fallen souls, his servants, the devotees of Lord Krishna, are also interested in educating the entire populace in Krishna consciousness. The mistake of materialistic life is understood by devotees, and therefore they smile upon it, consider it in insignificant. Out of compassion, however, such devotees preach the gospel of Bhagavad Gita all over the world. Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharine Nirishisha Shunyavadi Pasyatya De Sitarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhascha Kripa Sindhu Pavacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Vakta Vrindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So Prabhupada starts off the purport by making a very interesting point, which Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur in his commentary on this verse also. But they both say something a little bit different, and that is about Prahlad Maharaj smiling. He's smiling, he knows that they're you know, that their life in materialistic endeavors are just, you know, fool's paradise. 
But he's also smiling and for another reason, now I got you. <laughs> he got, he's got their attention. They're eager to hear from him. It's interesting. Krishna Chakrabarti in his commentary speaks on that. He says how uh, they were eager to hear from Prahlad Maharaj. There was some respect to seeing him that he was actually learned and senior in many ways amongst the students. And uh, so they wanted to hear from him and he was eager to speak. So this smiling was also indicated now, just like when you catch somebody who needs to be caught, then you are happy. <laughs> so in the same way, he's, he, now I caught you, and now I'm ready to instruct you in what you really need to hear. And that is, you know, Brahma Sokyam, or how to become happy, really, instead of the false happiness that goes on in this material world through, and it says through religion here. It says also they in religion. What does that mean? People trying to become happy through religion. Well, they take religion, religious activities as just a way to increase their, uh, you know, perks. In other words, they pray to God to get some kind of uh, success in life. So it's more like a business deal. They approach the Lord, and this is quite common. Not only is it quite common, it's quite voluminous or might per all pervading. Most people worship the Lord in order to improve their material situation. Give me good health, give me a nice material arrangement, some money and some success, good job. I remember when I went, I first was looking for a spiritual life, I came across this one uh, Japanese group. They were chanting these mantras. So I was also chanting, it was a nice mantra, Nam Yoho Ringe Kyo, <laughs> that was our mantra. But then I went to the first meeting, they used to have meetings once a month, and they would have people come up who were members and speak about their experiences in their practice of spiritual, of <laughs> demigod worship, <laughs> it was really demigod worship. And uh, so, and then they would always glorify the fact that now I'm successful in my job, I found that girl, I got that guy, you know, I'm, I'm happy, in this way. So it was nothing about, anything about God. God wasn't even mentioned. It was only about now increasing or successfully uh, securing their happiness in material life. And this goes on a lot. It's not something that is just, you know, here and there. People see God as an order supplier. But Prabhupada said, God is not an order supplier, he's an order giver. We take orders from him, and then that is our relationship to carry out what he wants, and that pleases him, and then we make progress. And what is our progress? Whether we gain materially or not, it's not really the indication of progress. And sometimes you see that. In certain religious groups, they propagate the idea that if you're materially successful in your, because of your worship, it's because of that. Because you're worshiping nicely and you're getting all these good things from God, therefore you, and that means God's pleased with you. He's given you all these nice things. So in that way they push the whole idea that a worship is really about gain. And you'll see that the, those are in those positions of what we say, priests or imams or you know, leaders in that. They they just push materialistic success as the as the result of of religious worship. It's a lot, a lot like that. You, but what we're saying is that uh, ultimately, uh, to become successful materially is not the goal of life. It's not the goal of life, because we see even those who have great material success, and this is a statistic, that they are the most miserable people practically in, in the world. Why? Because what they put all their energy on to achieve, they have, and but the happiness didn't come. So they, all they get is a lot of anxiety and frustration. It says that actually, according to the World Health Organization, some of the most suicidal and miserable people and are the most wealthiest and affluent people in the world. In fact, the highest suicide rate is among young, young teenagers who are born in affluent families. 
you know, devil's, you know, idle brain is a devil's workshop. So they have everything from the time of birth and they just go on and trying to enjoy their senses and then they realize, you know, it's frustrating. They can't find any well, lasting peace or happiness in that. And so they become suicidal. It's one of the highest, in fact, it is the highest rate in any category of people in the world is uh, affluent young people, all teenagers still in that teenage area. So we see that, you know, all this success that what people get, because the nature of the soul is that it cannot be happy by something that it's, di that it's different of its nature. Because we are spiritual, we, our happiness is also spiritual and not material. The material happiness can fortify the body and give some, what we say, so-called comfort. But it can't reach the, the person. It can't give us real satisfaction and happiness. Of course, people think like that. And therefore, when they achieve something, because they're striving for it, they feel a sense of happiness by getting what they want materially. But then, after that, it's something different. Because everything material, this is explained in Nectar Devotion, has two aspects to it. In other words, nothing is absolutely good in this world, and nothing is, well, most of the things are absolutely bad, but that's another thing. <laughs> well, nothing is absolutely good in this world. It always has another side to it. And one of, the, one of the prominent sides is, as Krishna makes that point in Bhagavad Gita, this world is temporary. So whatever you achieve, you lose. <laughs> and you just lose it in time. And while you're trying to get, enjoy it, it may not give you that so-called proposed enjoyment you have placed upon it. And therefore, you know, you go for another thing, try something else, something else, something else, something else. This is material life. And there's another group of people who worship the Lord, or don't worship the Lord, but have take up spirituality, and they are the Maya bodies, or the, what we say, people who think that the living entity <clears throat> is God, and therefore the whole process of spirituality is to regain our God godlike consciousness. And so they say the living entity is also the supreme, because, you know, they, they quote verses from the Shastras and they screw out their own meanings from these verses. What is that one verse they say? Um another one. But echo echo is it Dwijia Nasti. And that the spirit is one, so spirit cannot be divided. So spirit is one, and therefore every, everybody is uh, one in spirit, and therefore we're all God. And you can't be, there can't be a supreme spirit in the lesser spirit. That's what they say, that spirit is not divided. So you can't have a, a, a one person who is uh, a one category that is a higher spirit and a lower spirit. Spirit is one, you're dividing it. Well, Prabhupada said, just like a mine of gold, you have a gold mine, and, but you also have the gold ring. The gold ring is, is also gold, just like the mine, but it's not, it's not of the same quantity as the mine, although the quality may be there, at least to a large degree. So that they use these ideas that, okay, you perform austerities, penances, you worship, and you do chant mantras, and then you realize you're God. And everybody else is God too, therefore you should see all living entities as God, and therefore they're called Dridden or Narayan. Poor God, they just don't know they're God, but they're poor God. <laughs> and Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, yeah, all of a sudden God has become poor. He's a beggar in the street. You know? Although his name is Bhagavan, full in six opulences, now he's become a beggar. <laughs> so they think like that. Or they, they conjecture, they just speculate like that in order to uh, not to worship anyone. Now this is the, the impersonalism, and the Mayavadi ways of uh, seeing the Supreme. And therefore they also, what was that one point I was going to make? I forgot it. Uh, it's a very interesting point because it's, their whole idea is that, 
Yeah, well, you can become God. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you're not God now, but you could become God. So this, this is also. And Prabhupada says, how can you become God? God is God. There's no question of becoming God, because God is already there. You know? <laughs> how can anyone become God when God is the supreme source of everything? So they, they have no, when you actually take apart their philosophy, it becomes philosophy. <laughs> and it's not, it's, any person who believes it is, is one of these characters called a fool. But they're so expert at, at it's quoting scriptures, and they're very hard to defeat, easy also. If devotees come across these people and try to defeat them, they'll be very, very difficult to defeat because they know Shastra and they can explain things in a way that sounds very convincing to put their ideas forward. If you don't know Shastra, if you hear from Prabhupada, then I remember we used to have these debates in Nuvrindava in the old days. Every Sunday, they were just, just before the Sunday feast. And one, of, one person would take the position of the, the devotee and the other person would take the position of the Maya body. <laughs> and there would be a debate so we could get a little understanding of you know, the, how people you know, present, present there. But at one time, of course, our, our, uh, our community leader, Kirtananda Swami, was really expert debater. And, I mean, he was, you know, when in college, he was in the debating team, and he was one of the best in the debating team. So sometimes he would take the position of the Mayavadi. And I remember one other senior devotee was there at that time, and he took the position of the, you know, the devotee. And Kirtananda Swami defeated him. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know how to debate, it doesn't matter if you, how much you know of what is correct or not. The idea is the art of debate can destroy a person, even if you don't know all the principles. <laughs> so that's another, therefore they're good at that, they're good at changing words. And you'll be convinced, that's why problem, that Lord Chaitanya said, Mayavadi Krishna Aparadi. They're great offenders to Krishna, and if you hear their philosophy, what we say submissively, attentively, he says you're doomed. You can actually become, what we say, destroyed in your, in your enthusiasm to engage in bhakti. You know? So we don't listen to these personalities. Of course, devotees who are fixed in Krishna consciousness are not swayed by these things. But not all of us are, are on that level, so we have to be careful. But we take Lord Chaitanya's cautionary words, don't listen to these, you know, persons who have another, you know, agenda. What is their agenda? They're envious of the Supreme Lord. The materialists, they want the, they they want to get something from the Lord, and the Mayavadis or the personalists, they want they're envious of the Lord and they want to be worshipped also. That's why they call themselves Narayan, when they address each other. Om Namo Narayan. Om Namo Narayan. <laughs> and they all like that, you know, they're all Narayan. How many Narayans are there? We don't know. <laughs> to him and his reflection in the mirror. <laughs> So these, uh, yeah, these, 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 uh, so I mean, Prabhupada, you, you'd be surprised how much he speaks about this point in his lectures and also in his books, because he wants us not to be fooled and understand what is really bhakti. Bhakti means to worship the Supreme Personality of God and, and it's, it's personality. He's got, he's a, he's a person who has a form, who has qualities, who has characteristics, and who is a sarvakarnakarnam. He's the cause of all causes. He's the source of everything. Prabhupada even challenged us one time, or maybe more than once, and saying, do you actually believe Krishna is God? <laughs> he would challenge his devotees just to see how much they knew. And well, sometimes they would say, yes, and then Prabhupada would say, well, let me hear your explanation. Why do you believe Krishna is God? Because you said it, Prabhupada. No, 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 that's not it. <laughs> because, <laughs> because Bhagavad Gita said, and Prabhupada would reject all their different, you know, 
And you know, I actually don't know what the right answer is. <laughs> How do you know Krishna is actually God? <laughs> well, when you chant his name, you actually become purified from all material desires. He said, Panchatattva ki jai. That's one indication <laughs> that Krishna is God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we have to understand these two aspects that are, look like religion but are not real, true religious principles. They are just what we say. At best, they're what is called, uh, what we call kaitava. They're cheating forms of religion. They have some spiritual principles, but it's all about material success like that. Now here, Prahlad Maharaj, he's interested. He wants to somehow or other help his school friends. He's compassionate. This is one of the qualities of a Vaishnava. They don't like to see other people suffer. And they know that the suffering is due to ignorance. People suffer on the different ways. They suffer mentally, they suffer physically, and they suffer so many different ways, emotionally. But to suffer um, because uh, out of ignorance, then that ignorance is, means that what is the antidote or what is the cure, and that is knowledge. So devotee wants to give people knowledge of their relationship with everything, especially their relationship with the Supreme Lord. And so a devotee is concerned and compassionate. What Prabhupada said, devotee, we should preach Krishna consciousness. Every devotee should preach. He didn't say, well, just because those who have certain positions in society are our society of the preachers and everybody else just follows. No. He wanted everyone to take up the banner of pre preaching Krishna consciousness in whatever way we can. And he made the point really clear. Of course, he said, become qualified. But at the same time, he made it clear that there are two types of devotees that practice Krishna consciousness. Those who are concerned only about themselves and their own spiritual advancement. They're interested in how they make advancement. And there's those who are interested in helping others. He says the second group are actually the real devotees, or the ones that are actually uh, coming in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the spiritual world just to, you know, show compassion to the fallen conditioned souls. To assist Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the service of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas especially our movement in this kind of society. So how do we do that? Of course, that's a whole other explanation. There's so many ways where you can see how you can make a difference in the lives of others, like that. And the devotees, just like one way you can do is that you carry some mantra cards with you. Wherever you go, if you meet somebody, you talk to them, and then you give them a mantra card and explain something about you know, chanting like that. There's so many ways you can preach. Uh, we did a class, I did a few classes on ways of preaching. We came up with more than 40 different ways that you could use, you can be a, uh, a messenger or assist in giving the message of Krishna consciousness and others. So there's no, what we say, dearth of uh, varieties on how you can preach. There's so many ways. And devotees are preaching now by internet and it's having great effect, really. Uh, one of my disciples who stays in Gita Nagari, well, she's actually a doctor living outside. She has connected with thousands of people through the internet who are in India. She's giving 12 different Bhagavad Gita courses through different medias through the internet to people. She says, I don't know how she did it, but she's, she's somehow connected with all these people. And she's reaching thousands of people with the message of Bhagavad Gita. It's amazing because, you know, some of these medias, you can put on 500 people at a time or even more, they can be, they can listen. So this, this preach, preaching through the media has really become big ever since 
Mr. Corona has made his appearance. So we have a great advantage to reach so many people. And, uh, and we can also arrange it in such a way that they actually study and learn and interact with devotees through the media. And so this is uh, a great time for really to, to uh, get involved in more and more preaching. Because when you're preaching, you're happy. If you're not preaching, you're not happy. No, nobody, somebody will take issue with that. <laughs> but that's true. Actually, if you're, if you're actually preaching, why? Because you're pleasing Lord Chaitanya, you're pleasing Srila Prabhupada. And that pleasure comes in the form of the happiness you experience. So one has, the devotees have to see how they can make a difference in some way or another. Maybe before, maybe at some time I can give a, a presentation, I'd like to, on ways that we can preach. That might be something that devotees can find useful to explore different angles of how to reach out like that. Having kirtan programs, that's preaching. So many ways to preach Krishna consciousness. Giving prasadam, that's also preaching. So many ways to preach. In fact, giving prasadam is one of the main ways. And, and that's easy, we can do that. And that's, a, that's the most, what we say, receptive form of preaching. People like that. <laughs> I see the devotees go out in Harinam here, and somebody carries a basket of cookies, and you know, oh, you want a cookie for your kid? Here, have one for yourself too. You know? So we have, you know, Different devotees are doing that, giving out prasadam. And if they take prasadam, they get a little bit purified. So it's preaching also. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's, uh, he's very, very concerned. And you'll see, actually the next chapter, Prahlad instructs his demoniac schoolmates, is one of the most powerful chapters in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's so deep in philosophy. I remember when Srila Prabhupada came to New Vrindavan in 1976, this uh, sixth chapter of Bhagavatam, sixth chapter, Canto 7, had just been released. And they handed Prabhupada the new copy, you know, because in those, those days they had the smaller volumes. Prabhupada was so happy. Immediately he picked it up and started giving classes on that. And I can still remember one of the verses he, he gave the class on. I was there in the class. It was uh, verse 11 through 13 in the next chapter, which is actually three verses in one. It's a really powerful verse. So you'll uh, please come to the, the lectures for this next chapter. It is so deep in Krishna conscious philosophy. Both the verses and Prabhupada's purports are really are quite amazing. Sometimes devotees even say it's one of the most powerful chapters in the entire Bhagavatam. So, but of course that's, that's discussable because there are, there are so many other powerful chapters also. But it is up there in terms of... So this is a wonderful section of the Bhagavatam. We can learn so much of the knowledge of Krishna consciousness and how Prabhupada explains it in such a way that we can understand it and practice it. Like that. So, yeah, Balad Maharaj, he's so, so, so kind, so concerned. He knows he's going to get chastised for doing this, but he's doing it anyway. He's not, he's not fearful, or he's not concerned about what will happen to him. He's just concerned to preach. And we see there are devotees like that who risk their lives to preach. And Prabhupada said, I take the dust of the feet of my devotees on my head. Whoever preaches in Muslim countries, what's the other two places, Maharaj? He said three places, and if you... <laughs> huh? Muslims. Muslim country was one. Uh, he preached where else? 
some other place. Communist countries. Communist countries, right, that was the second one, yeah. And one more. Uh, Slovenia. Slovenia. <laughs> Specifically Ljubljana. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you're, you're here. <laughs> Get special mercy. <laughs> okay. So, okay, we can uh, see if there's any discussion on this particular topic or related topics. Should I tell you a joke? Okay. No, that's not good. <laughs> Somebody, ask, where's our friend here who always asks questions? Okay, give him the microphone. It's always the, you know, everybody's shy, but when, as soon as somebody asks a question, never anybody loosens up a little bit. So. We have a question over there. No question today? Okay. 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 So we stop here? Okay. Thank you very much. Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki. Yeah. Mm -hmm.